uh, we were learning that if I actually do die, like There's, some of your final thoughts towards me while well, I'm alive, probably not it, be flattering. It, Brunch, hit it, boys. The TV writers are striking again. TV's about to get really bad. I heard. I don't want to be... I, I I feel for the writers, definitely. And obviously, they need a raise commensurate with all the new money that comes in with streaming and all that stuff. But a common refrain today has been, just wait. You don't know how bad it got in 2007 during the 0708 writers strike and i agree people don't know how bad it got and they are not going to know how bad it got because back then tv was all we had we didn't have streaming we didn't have we had like i guess like you'd buy some stuff and you'd have tv shows on dvd and stuff yeah but now if someone's like hey your favorite TV show is going to get worse. That definitely does suck, and I would have a meltdown over it, but it wouldn't fuck up my TV watching to the point where I'd be ruined. Like, I think that people, if they see a bad episode of a TV show these days, are like, fuck, that sucked. And then they go and they watch The Office for the 400th time. Yeah, that didn't exist true. in 2007. Yeah, that's true. You do have like your, um, your, your classics and like your, your safe fallback plans. And I don't know. I just feel like there's like, there's so much like entertainment. But I also do think that like TV is, I don't want to say like the gold, we're in the golden age of TV, but there's a lot of good TV right now. Mm -hmm. And if it takes a big dip, people are going to be pissed. Yeah, they should be pissed. But I find it funny that people are like, and again, like I'm not saying it's not important that these people get paid, but I find it funny that people are like, oh man, content is going to get so bad. And I'm like, yo, I, no, not to this you, you, but uh you were upset that Love is Blind wasn't on the other day, right? Me? No. No. I'm saying like to this you, the oh, people that okay, are saying yeah. the content is going to get so bad. We're in a mix of we don't, we don't need we we want some good content, we want some terrible content. Here's the thing, and I don't know whether this is like um is good or bad for the sake of like the TV writers. Everything seems like it's getting worse every single day. Mm-hmm. Like almost everything is just a little bit worse every day and tv to me has been like the one thing that's been like this thing's probably getting better yeah and uh so if tv starts getting worse i think it'll fit in with its surroundings in the world today but i don't know if people will be like what the fuck you're taking away the one good thing that means a lot to me you know what i'll do if i know there's a prolonged stretch of bad tv coming what Rewatch Mad Men. Okay. Hey, there are a lot of things that I've like missed on that I could definitely like, I could just watch. Yeah. I've been wanting to like get into old movies and I've been keeping a list of like old movies that like, like really old movies. Oh. Like really like early movies. Your stuff. Casablancas. Exactly. And Your... so I have a list of that kind of stuff that I think I'm going to get to at some point this summer. I, uh, you got to watch The Sting. The Sting. I, I watched the Sting. Is that the one that you ins- you explained to me on the podcast? Probably. It was a it's like a classic, and I saw it for the first time maybe a year ago. And it man, it's so good. Okay. And I was like, if this is what old movies are, I'll watch all the old movies. And then I asked around, and people were like, "Oh, that was a really good old movie. Okay. That was like a, an especially good movie." Um. Well, I mean, like I had this conversation with Lambert like about a month ago, where he was like, "Dude, I'm doing like a I'm doing a." Uh, Stanley Kubrick watch Ooh, like a, yeah. a run through and I was like that's a cool thing that's a cool thing to be able to be like all right this director I'm watching all his movies or I'm watching all her movies and I'm just gonna like get caught up a hundred percent on this one director and that's something that we don't do like we don't intentionally like okay gotta learn everything about like this person who's a big deal I did it uh I would disagree like that's something you that might I do. do yeah like I so I, th- honestly that's kind of the only way I consume really stuff. I oh God yeah 
I know yeah. that you have like your phases. I, right. So I'll just be like totally locked in. Like when I got into Metallica when I was a kid, I got all their albums okay. in order, watched them all. During quarantine, when I was like, I need to fill in any gaps I have with Quentin Tarantino, I watched them all from the beginning. I do that with like the, the Affleck week thing that we did. Yeah. That's something that I don't know if I would have thought like, hey, it's Affleck time, but like that's kind of how I spend my time anyway. Okay. I just don't podcast. Uh, I don't do it that it way. After. That's that's interesting. I know you don't do it that way. And that's why uh, I've found it so fun getting you into the Beatles because it's not as simple as like, here's their first album. Go from there. I know that like there needs to be things that'll grab you and stuff. I need like the hook. Yeah. Whereas like I'm, I'm always interested to see the evolution and like as long as the beginning I think is okay. If I listen, like if I watched, if I watched, I don't know, if I watched Reservoir Dogs and I was like, this is stupid. I hate the whole thing. And especially that one guy, that guy is Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> okay. Then I'm not doing any more of them, but it, it's a, it's a, a kind of bad example because obviously I, 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 that's not how I got into Quentin Tarantino, but just as an example, like if, if I get in from the beginning of something, that's already concluded and it's interesting enough. Hell yeah. I'll ride it all the way through. Well, I mean, like I, I definitely don't hate doing it. It's just, I don't, I, I, maybe it's like, I'm, I have like the fear of commitment where it's like, okay, I don't want to watch like these eight things or whatever, but I do. I, I really like when we do like deep dives in like the specialty weeks. So maybe there is an opportunity this summer to like start like, all right, this is this week. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be like a, hey, we're doing Affleck week or yeah. whatever. But like, hey, like we should show up on the podcast one week and we're like, okay, last week we did Kubrick. It's how you know everything about something. Yeah. And that's a fun thing to do. I, um, you know who mine was for the 2013 lockout? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Like, I'm going to watch every Tom Hanks movie. I remember that. And I watched like the first six ones and... Then that's the thing. Whenever you think like, oh, I'm going to have so much time on my hands. What am I going to do? Then you just start living life. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you the, never have time no, on your hands. Well, I mean, like, I think that it. we're adults now. Like, as much as we try to pr pretend that we're not, we are adults. And there are just responsibilities that constantly pop up. Yeah. And you never have as much time as you think you're going to. And that's why, like, I, I so miss, like fucking summer vacation man because one summer vacation when the last day of school gets out mm -hmm. you have nothing on the docket for like three months and you're like how am i gonna finish all this unless this? your like, parents hate you in which case they're like yo you know what you would love a job camp <laughs> it's fair uh but like i in, saved up with money i don't have to make sure i don't see you this summer <laughs> uh you when you did the the hanks thing in 2013 that was in my like still ch childish era because i remember being like that's a good idea i could definitely do that like Wait, I could, you remember what when i was doing it i remember it? when you were doing it as like a i don't know dj bean it, or I like, like i, I like, you, yeah. right like i'm like i'm a yeah, I'm a fan. I remember you doing that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and um because like uh, around that time around that lockout is like when I started getting into European hockey and I started doing like the IHF World yeah. Juniors and stuff. Like that was my first World Juniors experience and it was literally because I was so fucking bored mm -hmm. and had nothing to do. So like I was like, ah, he's doing a cool thing with all this time that he has. Yep. Uh And now Nobody has any time. Tom Hanks movies uh, and improv classes. Yep, I do remember the improv as well. Which I wasn't, I for sure wasn't like tweeting about the improv classes or anything. But I remember but you talking yeah, about right, it when like, we first started hanging out. Still something I would recommend everyone to do. Because like right now, I would not, I'd probably be intimidated by the idea of improv classes or something. But it's a good... Uh, it's just a good way to, you know, when they say like lift free weights instead of doing the machines because it kind of uses muscles that you wouldn't otherwise use. You have to keep yourself in, in in between the lines. Yeah. I mean, like if you're interested in TV or whatever, it seems like it's a very, very uh, useful thing to do just to like react on your feet or react to like the unexpected yeah, but there is like multiple types of TV people. There are t there are types of there's TV people who 
could make it through an improv class and there are TV people who are like, I got into TV because there's structure. I, I want to read I, the words in front yeah. of me. And what the hell is this with the improv class thing? That's fair. Yeah, no, but um, I mean, like in my experience that I- improv seems like it would be very helpful. And we, we had this conversation uh, this week or last week when um, we did some some hockey stuff together. I got a note, by the way, uh, both of us talking with colds right now. Oh, I did want to bring this up because this guy shows up to the podcast studio last week and is like, hey, uh, by the way, I'm very sick. And I, I could say I'm w- very sick. You didn't say you were very sick, yeah. but... When you showed up, you didn't have to say it because I smelled That's it. That's right. Famously, the last, the podcast the last episode podcast. was titled The Sick, Sick Smell. And as soon as you showed up, I was like, ah, you shouldn't be here. What do you know? Like two days later, guess who starts feeling not so hot? Copying me as usual. <laughs> Fuck Just you. <laughs> get your own thing, man. Yeah, so I am also uh, quite sick right now. But we had the conversation. I've healed, but my allergies are, I think, so bad that I'm just going to like remain I, I can't tell what it is yeah i can't tell if it's allergies or because everybody's talking about allergies kicking their ass but like i don't usually get hit too hard by it and like did take a covid test it's not that great so that saved you a covid test that's right like if you have what i have it's not covid <laughs> um when we were talking about tv uh one of our our things we were like so prepared for we were like so we did a ton of research had a lot of points that we wanted to hit and it was our worst fucking tv hit because we were just all over the place we wanted to get like in my experience if i'm over prepared i it's worse like it's worse for me i'd rather be way under prepared because when i'm over prepared i want to say everything that's right. on my mind and i trip over myself and stumble over all my words trying to get to all my points but when i'm under prepared it's like it's v- way more natural it's way more like conversational because i'm just like having the conversation rather than trying to recite something that i put in my brain so the the improv thing th- seems like it would help. My so my thing with that is, and I'm I'm not to be like I agree. I noticed that is as well. You definitely are like I don't want to lose this fucking thing that I have because if I or like my guess is you're like I I have these like five cool things mm-hmm. and if I don't say them now probably nobody else in the world is doing this topic right now. And then this like good information, I'm actually like telling you people something just kind of goes away. And that is tough to let go of like, all right, I got 30. If like maybe a producer's in your ear and it's like 30 seconds or whatever, you're like, I have four more quick things just being like, fuck, some of them got to die. That does suck. And and like that is when you get like, and and, 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 and even if you, even if you, even if you spit them out and that you kind of like rush them out, they're not going to get fucking consumed because the way that you deliver them is not palatable. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm learning so much more about TV and just like how, like all of the thing, so many of the things that I thought mattered don't matter. It's just fucking, entertainment and if you're not entertaining nobody gives a fuck that's exactly it tv's crazy easy yeah like it's it's not crazy easy but it's crazy simple like it's yeah you just have to keep it simple and be entertaining and that's it like you I, i don't know like i've spent so much of my life like trying to come off as smart or like do a ton of research and and make all my points and I, th- I feel like over the, like the last year, year and a half, I've kind of hit a like an epiphany point where I'm like, I don't have to do all yeah. this shit. You come just- off your best on here by far. And not to say that you don't come off great uh, if you're doing other stuff, but like this is how you sound. And you definitely, I don't know, like I don't think your brain changes from one thing to the next. I think that sometimes when people do different things they think all right well this should be more professional or this yeah should be you like more, put yourself in a box or here's a where bit. i'm smart or whatever yeah. and like i i think that you're just the, always you you're never smart no uh, like, <laughs> like i i just think that you're always you so if you're in a hockey conversation i trust you to make a good point as much as i trust you if we're just fucking talking about the way that we consume tv or whatever we're doing yeah fair some of this stuff has come to me like while just like being high and watching uh watching like hockey coverage. Yeah. And I'm just like watching like the TNT or TBS stuff and I'm like, this is great, but like 
they're not they're not like saying a whole lot and it's just like well sometimes that shit doesn't really matter because there are stuff that I've watched where like they're trying to say a whole lot and you're like this sucks. Oh no, I b- believe you me. Like if I were to teach a fucking college course on doing TV, the number one thing I would say is don't worry about the appearance of being smart or the appearance of being polished or hey, we're like we've got the news and we're bringing it to you like nope the news is fucking everywhere mm-hmm. we already have the news if i'm a sports fan and i'm watching a hockey intermission show you either i've left the tv on so i'm cool with you being background noise or i am such a big sports fan that i am watching a hockey intermission show yeah i don't need to feel hey like do, do you think that liam McHugh ever comes off as like you need to hear it from me, Liam McHugh. No, he fucking doesn't. Liam McHugh comes off as a cool fucking guy who is on the hockey intermission show. Yeah, and, and he's just like, I'm. I'm here to just facilitate. And- exactly. I am here to wrangle up all these these this this barrel of God knows what <laughs> I've got over here. And Biz he is so is, fucking good at his job. He's great. Biz, I mean, uh, one of the intermission shows is better than the other intermission show correct I th- and i i did that i don't need to don't think we need to spell that. it out for you pal a lot of a <laughs> lot of people spell it out and i like both networks a lot and blah, 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 but i think the one i think one does, of the networks gets in its own way way exactly. more than the other one does the one that does better though does the thing that i'm talking about which is just like fucking hang out they're prepared they have the things they want to talk about they're certainly passionate about it like mm-hmm. biz I think is probably the best panelist on any of those shows. And, and he's out uh, he will not take this as an insult. He's a personal friend of mine. He's not the smartest guy in the world. He doesn't fucking need to be. He needs the, to be entertaining. You, you want to know how I know how he's not smart? Why? He used to call me for like advice on stuff. I don't think he called you for advice. I think he well, just like, wanted your thoughts. Well, yeah, right. So that's yeah, that's a better way to put it. Like, like not, how not does advice. the internet like, feel about yeah, this? Yeah, like, now? like how does... or, or just like how do you feel about right. this? Yeah, like okay, advice is the wrong word, but like he would call me for an opinion. Yeah, and so if you're asking me for an opinion, you're not smart. Sorry, Biz. No, I think uh, it's I think it's crowdsourced. I, I think it's a smart thing to do because like he at, cares wh- whether he's going to talk about something or whatever. Be like, hey. All right, because uh, you do you are a good representative of like what is ho- or what what does sane hockey Twitter think about this? Not what does crazy hockey Twitter Fair. think about this? But I like, love okay, that guy, man, how did how did you view it? All right, and you've tweeted that, and you haven't gotten killed for it. Okay, so he does. That's one does that, do his due diligence. So this is like what the masses think about this, and uh, he's checking Rotten Tomatoes before he sees a movie. That's right. I love that guy, man. He's he's so good on TV, and he's just like the best guy. Big, big uh, fan. Speaking of uh, the best guys, uh, you listen to the new Smokey Robinson album? You hear about it? Nope. You know what it's called? Smokey Robinson. Gasm. Gasm? He's 83. It's okay. called Gasm. As and, in, uh, like, he's uh, clarified. as in, uh, like... No clue. No, uh, he has <laughs> clarified it's about love, and th- this is a, a an all new album of original songs. He's eighty three years old. Okay, he's putting out an album called Gasm. I like that. Yep, uh, a lot of people jumping on the Gasm train. I do like Gasm, which I hope they do. Uh, Father John Misty, I put, I saw it just before we started recording this. I already had it in my notes that we were going to talk about this album. Okay, but Father John Misty posted uh, like his version of the album cover, and it's just like. Josh Tillman, and it says Gasm on it. Big fan of that. We should yeah. put that on T-shirts. Um, the, speaking of Gasms, I I know that you saw because I sent it to you. The um, the a woman at the L.A. Philharmon yeah. show recently had a full body orgasm yeah. while listening to the orchestra play. Mm-hmm. I, Settle down there. I saw them. They weren't that good. I didn't know if it was an overdone tweet or I, I've reached the point with Twitter now where I'm like. Would this joke be good? I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> and I will just forget it. But the joke I was going to do, because there was audio of it. I heard the audio. Did you hear the audio? I heard the audio. I was going to say. Per, it was immaculately timed. Yeah. Like, as like the as the instruments got like lower and there was like a little bit of a lull, it was just, ah! <laughs> so I was going to tweet, uh, do, I re- do I need to be the one that says it? That is not <laughs> what an or a woman's orgasm sounds like. It Dude. sounds like a little yip, then good job and a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> 
But I saw that it, I already saw that it had a bunch of quote tweets. I'm like, someone's made that joke. Well, I I made a similar joke directly in response to Jason Isbell because I was like the f- I was the first guy in there after Isbell tweeted it, and I and I uh, I hit him with the uh, oh, so that's what that sounds like. Yeah. So there was I'm sure there was a million of those jokes made. So, I mean, yeah, let's get into it for a sec. What does it sound like? What caused caused that sound from that woman? Was it the music or was uh, she up to no good? Uh, I I, I would imagine that it was the music because being there, we're cultured. We we have this experience. No, I wasn't even going to say that. Like, they're kind of like, the security is high in that place. Oh, they, true. They have like can't bring a phone in can't there. Can't bring a phone in there. They have like people watching over every section. Yeah. from what I remember. So I don't. I can't imagine that'd be pretty. That'd hot. be real sneaky. Getting it on at the symphony. I I like wonder. Maybe she's like a blind woman, and she has like enhanced senses, uh, and the vibrations from the orchestra really got to her. Or maybe yeah. she was just on drugs. Mm. We did briefly have a conversation with a friend recently about if you were to lose senses, which mm-hmm. ones would go first. And knock on wood, this is very morbid, and we don't hope to lose any of our senses. I said, I said I could. I don't want to say it. I'm like jinxing myself, but I said just let me keep my hands and my ears, mm-hmm. and then the other ones. It would I'd hate to lose them, but they could go. And you were. You were saying no, no way, Jose. You said, yeah. You you said like you the first because you were thing, like you, I could lose. You said, I- the, you said the first thing that you would give up would be your eyes. Yeah, but I'm afraid to say it now because it sounds like I'm asking for it. Well, yeah, I'm putting it out there. DJ said he's totally cool if he loses his eyes. No, I mean you. I took offense with uh, with saying the first thing you would volunteer is your eyes. Absolutely, fucking no chance. That's Let the last say, thing I want. to This lose. goes without saying that like you're losing. Uh, the five like, senses, like, uh, whatever, like the wax senses are, those don't count. Well, well, you were like, I would, lo- I'd be down to lose my nose or my sense of smell, right? But then somebody made the point that, like, that yeah, is a they, they huge were like, part I can't because I need to eat. Yeah, yeah. foodie. Yeah, so uh, I, I think hearing would be the first thing that I would volunteer uh, because I could still, like, I'm not as big of a music guy as you are. I could still watch TV with the subtitles on. I could yeah. still watch sports. I could still, like, see what I want to see. And uh, I, I, I think that my quality of life would be least affected by losing my ears. The eyes would be the most. So, wait, let's just get this straight. You... My son and my partner are saying that yes. you would go deaf. Yeah, I would go deaf. I wonder if I would abandon you. <laughs> it's it's history. Well, would, history would suggest yes. Would you light my little like shack on fire or whatever HW did to get Daniel all pissed off at him? Depends how how badly you treated me as a deaf boy. I don't know if Daniel was. Tra- I, re- I recently watched. He uh, was mean. Was what he was mean. Who was Daniel? Daniel to HW? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Da- uh, Daniel Daniel wasn't so great to uh, anybody. anybody in that yeah. movie. He uh his fake brother, he wasn't very nice to. Although his fake brother lied to him. But he he just seemed like uh not a great guy, let's be honest. Oh my god, what a fucking picture. Yeah, rewatched that uh in chunks while sick over Oh man, you got to you got to share a, a couple of stories about uh, oh, over the God. past week. You've had a couple interesting experiences in bed. Okay. Can I just with let's no get, gasms? Let's get to the big one. Okay. And part of it, I want to volunteer that like yesterday I was pretty mad at you. Like as the day went on. Okay. A very weird thing happened to me on Sunday. And as I retell this story, I think Pete's going to start to feel bad and be like, uh, maybe Pete gets a little mad at himself, but yeah, it's maybe. okay. I love you. Uh, on Sunday, we got back from Portland, and I was feeling pretty tired, and I got into bed and put on basketball, and I was just going to lie in bed and watch some basketball. At 1.44 p.m., I sent a text message to Michael Felger, and that is the last thing I sent. Mm-hmm. I then woke up at 9 a.m. feeling very refreshed, kind of confused, thinking, what day is it? Do I have someplace to be? 
I had woken up at 9 a.m. on the nose, no alarm, nothing. I'm confused. I'm thinking it must be Sunday. And they said, no, it was in Maine this weekend. It was in a hotel Saturday into Sunday. So today must be Monday. So did I... I was watching basketball. Did I miss the rest of that game? And then what? And I looked at the TV, and the Bruins had a big game on Sunday night. Sure did. And the TV was still on because I was watching basketball. <laughs> and the ticker said Florida four, Boston three, overtime. Florida advances, Boston greatest regular season. Blah, 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 blah. I then look at my phone, which. I still haven't. I, I just didn't read. I haven't read any of the stuff. That I wouldn't. <laughs> I uh, probably for the best. Uh, I, I haven't done this in a while. But like when I get when I get blackout drunk and like I see that like I was texting or whatever. Oh, yeah. I never go back and read. It just gives me like the worst scaries. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't uh, have that anymore, which is. <laughs> yeah, very, right. Very, Same. It's been a long time. A, a big, big relief. But there was a trick that Feidelberg invented. Do you know? Do you know what? No. Cross your eyes cross your oh like you cross your eyes and go it, through and delete and, the whole oh, thing okay i love that which is like <laughs> fucked yeah uh anyway so i go to like the core text messages that i should probably read and you were obviously like throughout the day like text me about normal stuff and then like text me about the game and then like hey what the fuck blah blah in some group texts, hey, has anybody heard from DJ sort of stuff? And I'm like, ah, oh, I feel really bad. I called you. I was like, hey, everything's okay. I don't know what fucking happened, uh, but I just slept for 17 straight hours. I checked with my doctor and got to say, doc, your didn't doctor, love the your response. Your response was fucking hilarious. It was like, huh, weird. Uh, no, <laughs> Let me know if this no, happens again. It was uh, very odd. Let me know if it happens again. I'm like, if it happens again, I might, am I going to die or something? Like, I was very a odd is a, just such a terrible response to get from a doctor. So I was kind of like partially, haha, that was funny. And I like, I, I went back and I was like rewatched all the sports that I missed and did any work that I needed to do and stuff. But partially because of something Feidelberg said in the back of my head, I was like, that's like weird. And you've, there's obviously not to say that. I'm not, not doing any sort of what was me thing, but like there's obviously stories of people being like, oh, uh, they weren't feeling so hot and like they took a nap and yeah, then, like right. they didn't fucking wake up. Yeah. And I was like 17 hours. How it's I wonder, crazy. And I, I'd been taking medicine like I've been. We talked about this blowing past oh, kids. Yeah, don't try right. this at home. I've been blowing past all the medication uh parameters uh, fucking parameters mm -hmm. because i was like just trying to fucking get better and i was exhausted and not sleeping a lot and uh we were in maine the night before and we didn't get a ton of sleep and so i just didn't know what was going on uh so here's where by the end of the day i was like a little annoyed with yeah you. get to me get to where i fucked up you like continued to kind of like give me shit for it and i was like Oh, well, no, that was, uh, the, so where I gave you shit for it was like, uh, I thought you were being fucking, trying to make a joke about like, uh, we definitely had a miscommunication where you asked me to send you something oh, right, right. and I, I sent it to you, but then I forgot to acknowledge that like, Hey, sent it and yeah. you didn't acknowledge that like received it. Mm -hmm. So like, I want to say 35 minutes later yeah. or something, I texted you and I was like, sent it. And you were like question your first thing back was like question mark like did you just see this i was like yeah i was like i i, I was yeah i was like i, I got it I, wait I, did my text just go through to you now or there I, was i i like interpreted that text message as like passive aggressive like oh did you just see this oh no no and, like and, i i got your email as soon as you sent it and it was all good yeah so. so like when i was like is he fucking serious after i just like had to go through 14 hours thinking that he was fucking dead oh. and being in like texting your friends to yeah. be like, have you heard from DJ? Like he might be. I legitimately thought there was like by the time uh, Monday morning rolled around, I thought there was a pretty good chance that you had died because 
I know how important Game 7 of the Bruins-Panthers series were, mm-hmm. was to you. The fact that you didn't respond to any of my texts, didn't respond to any of the group texts, didn't tweet at all, didn't uh, didn't follow. We had a we had a, a a taping on Monday morning. Yeah, didn't respond to any of my texts about that. Yeah. No plans about it. I was like, your phone was your, your phone was either dead or on do not disturb because it went straight to voicemail. That actually, unfortunately, is just a thing that's on my phone. I don't know how to change it. Okay, <laughs> my right. phone always goes to voicemail. I mean, I rarely ever call yeah. you, and if I do, you usually answer. Uh, so like all signs were pouring to you, like potentially being dead and i had to like both juggle that at that potential and also making sure that i still do my job for oh, right. monday morning so like it was very fucking stressful and the bruins had just lost game seven and suffered the worst collapse so it was a very tough sunday night <laughs> trying to figure all of that out uh, uh, yeah so, so i i felt very bad about that and i and before the miscommunication later in the day happened uh, I'd set you like, Hey, uh, like I've kind of come to and have like begun my day and have, uh, m- caught up with everything I need to catch up with. Like, I'm really sorry. That must've been so fucking stressful. And then a few hours later we had that miscommunication and yeah, yeah. But you, you so you'd snap back someone like, Oh, like Mr. Oh, yeah. uh, like dies <laughs> well, for the that- day <laughs> is telling me like needs, needs a, an a exact, like a, an immediate response. And I didn't, I like laughed about it then. Cause I was like, this is clearly a miscommunication. But as the day went on, I was like, that motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, I almost died. Even though I don't think I almost died. Uh, uh, the, I just like you were like giving me shit about like making you wait twenty minutes. Or at least that's what I interpreted it as. And I was like, "Are you fucking serious, Mister? I just slept seventeen hours and almost died, and made all my friends think that I was dead." No, yeah, th- there's a number of uh, people who like thought, and like, like, and, like the, the, the rest not- of the day was saying like, "Hey." So like, how are you feeling now, or whatever? Yeah. And I, but I won't lie, I was afraid to go to sleep last night. I I, I barely slept last night because I was so afraid to fall asleep. And I mean, like with your explanation, I was like, all right, well, like there's nothing he can do about that. But like for a little while, like before I was legitimately concerned that you were dead, I was a little pissed because I was like. I swear to God, if this motherfucker went out for like, like the, the games, be yeah, <laughs> like if this motherfucker went out for game seven and like his phone died at the bar and he just like couldn't tweet or couldn't text or whatever and left me hung out to dry trying to plan for Monday morning, that's where I was like, I will fucking kill you. So if I really die, there's a, we were learning that if I actually do die. Like there's, some of your final thoughts towards me while I'm alive probably not it, be flattering. It's some uh, <laughs> may contain succession spoilers. Some real uh, Roman Logan. <laughs> yes, your last voicemail to me is going to be asking me if I'm a C bomb. Yep, <laughs> yep. Did you leave me a voicemail? No, no. no. Uh, yeah, that that wouldn't do any. That does no good. It does absolutely no good when the when the call goes straight to voicemail. Right. Uh, so what are you going to turn on your phone and go straight to voicemail to check that out? D- I must again clarify this. I didn't even like go down for a sleep that, that I think that's the most concerning part is that it wasn't like it wasn't even like a a planned nap. It was just, oh, boy, you just like dropped and 17 hours later resumed your life. Yeah. So if I die soon as a result of this, this is a really morbid podcast. Uh yeah, that's what was happening prior. So if you want to study be fair, my brain to, and my heart. To be fair, though, like we did have a very late, yeah, yeah. very late Saturday night yeah. into an early Sunday morning. Following a long week of right. like being sick. Being sick and, and doing exhausted. a lot. Yeah. yeah. It, it seemed like the perfect storm for like that maybe to happen. But still, 17 hours is fucking crazy. Yeah. The we the a wild one. Oh, by the way, yo, I I was like for real. I was uh, I was Florence Pugh in Don't Worry Darling. Like my mouth was just like dry as you shit. didn't Seven, drink anything I was for like, 17 hours and i was like one of my first thoughts was like how did i not pee the bed You're just like <laughs> if you sleep for 17 hours you know how dehydrated you got to be yeah holy fuck i mean that's definitely didn't think of that but all i'd had that day was basically everything that becky's diner has to offer portland maine incredible place. shout out becky's diner we basically i'll tell the other dj bed story uh in a minute but 
we did the exact same thing this past week with this past Saturday in Portland, Maine, as we did the previous one. Like, yeah, like almost to a T and like got, sat at the same tables at yeah. the restaurants and breweries that we not went even to. by our choice. Right. They like just, just like, a complete deja vu. Yeah. But and like we saw the best performances from both artists that we've ever seen. Father John Misty, we talked about on last uh, last episode, put together an incredible show at the State Theater in Portland. And we saw our Houndmouth boys uh, on Saturday. And holy fuck, they they killed it. Yeah. And uh, not only did they kill it, the crowd was fucking crazy. We met up with them after the show. And like all I could talk about was like, hey, so you guys are the fucking Beatles now, huh? Mm. Like a lot of young people just screaming their brains out yeah, because they loved Houndmouth so much. Like, the energy in that crowd was insane. We get there, and you could just tell. Like, you you and I got there before the rest of our friends. We were like, man, people, like, lined up. Like, there, there was a big line to get in, we saw, because we were staying near the hotel anyway. And, man, people were lined up. It was tough to find a spot in there. And when they came out, man, people went fucking wild. And uh, Zach Appleby, founding member of Houndmouth, was in town just on vacation. So he came out, did 15 years, did uh, my cousin, my cousin Greg. Greg, a lot of uh, a lot of the old classics. And they did. They just played so fucking well. They they're always great. Matt is just a fucking guitar god. He is Matt Myers is. Without a doubt, my favorite guitar player these days. That band, we've gushed about them a lot. We got to have them back on the podcast at some point. But every time I see them, all I want to do is hang out. Because I truly, I was thinking about this. I have more fun simply hanging out with those dudes. I like, know. I've had some of my most fun times <laughs> throwing fucking darts. I don't even throw darts. <laughs> but, like playing fucking darts or just sitting at a table fucking telling stories or just fucking discussing life those are yeah, the fucking so, best dudes so my like i i left uh portland on sunday thinking like that was like one of the cooler like more meaningful hangs that i've had in like years mm -hmm. and i agree it is really uh it's really, really cool hanging out with those guys because every time I hang out with them, like there are just like insanely real conversations that we have about life. And like, I don't know those guys as well as you do, but like every time I see them, they like give great hugs and they like ask about my life and yeah. they're just the best dudes. They are the best. And like the conver every conversation that has had with not only them, but like the dudes that are now also in the band yeah. or tour with them, like surround themselves with the great dudes and like have unbelievable conversations with those guys as well. So like I really want to have them on the podcast both for like love them and want to put them on the podcast and like talk about their work and stuff. But like I, I know that our conversations will be more than probably just like goofing around and joking around. Yeah, I, I won't uh, blow up anyone's spot, but uh, somebody related to the band uh, bounced a character off uh, our head. Like, hey, I got this character. What do you think of it? And we were like, that is the best character in the world. And either you come on the podcast and do it, yeah. or you just give it to us and then eventually sue us because we will <laughs> ride that thing to the fucking top. They're, is, they're awesome dudes. They're I, the best. And like the the, uh, the amount of ground that you can cover in a like a night of hanging out with them is unbelievable because like real conversations, but also just incredible like boyhood debauchery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's the, like, I was thinking about that. Like, no no one's misbehaving or anything but it's just like a bunch of it's just the fellas fucking having a laugh and i was i i grab a lot of face when i'm hanging with those boys yeah by which i mean like oh you you uh uh shane at one point came out with a shirt and was like hey man want you to have this this is from the little neon limelight so days jealous. and it's this fucking oh, dickies so work shirt 
that's incredible on the front. It says Hellmouth. It, it looks back, like a bowling it, shirt. It's yeah, but it's a uh, it's a, it's, you know, like it's a Dickies, Dickies work yeah, shirt. Right. Yeah, but it looks uh, like a bowling shirt. It's sick. And I saw. I was like. I saw the the M on it. There's a medium, and I was so like, mad. I know that Pete's looking at that thing, thinking he's getting a fucking hand me down. I will lose whatever fucking weight I need because this is the sickest fucking shirt I've seen in my life. Uh, it hurt me so. And bad. I tried it on. Ooh, baby, <laughs> I've never, so I've good. never wanted anything worse in my life than that fucking work shirt. And you were like, listen, it's a medium. It it might be yours. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, DJ, yeah. start eating more Oreos. You tried it on. You like as soon as I heard the ooh, I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, a little devastating. But you also deserve it because you gave the boys shirts, and the shirts that you gave the boys were incredibly well received. And, yeah, uh, and you know what's a crazy? highlight of the night. I think that's why we get along so well with them. Is I'm sure there have been some like as is the case with any folks when you're. BSing with each other, but anything weird that we throw out there is generally celebrated. It's yeah. like a, not too often is there a like, what the fuck was that? Get the hell out of here. And even if you go to our interview with them, oh, we were yeah, just we, trying we, to like we, push it farther and farther and farther. Like and that was the first right time we'd the met them. Yes, yeah. first time we'd met them. And we were like, I remember uh I I was like uh, what do you think it would sound like if uh, Tom Waits did one of your songs and they were like I don't know and then I was like I do and then I just like sang one of their songs like Tom Waits and they were like whoa <laughs> And, awesome <laughs> and by the end of the interview that was like the least weirdest thing that was said yeah. because like i remember i think it was matt who was talking about like somebody buried drugs at uh at like austin city limits or Lollapalooza, and like yeah. went back and like made a really dark joke about yeah. it and like i was like okay if they're willing to go there nothing that we are gonna say is like gonna be weird or like whatever like uh, the vibes are just very seamless yeah i i truly love those guys uh happy belated to the great matt myers mm -hmm. they it, it, i think they only have one week left on this tour but go see them they sound so fucking great uh caleb hickman who's been in the band for a while Holy and is just moly. a gr great fucking piano player and a, a beautiful singer they do south side which was on the that EP that they put out at the California beginning, Voodoo? uh, no, the one after is uh, the like I think it might have just been called like the Greenhouse Tapes. Or oh something. Yeah, 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 it was uh, the it, Bandcamp special. Yes, yeah, it came yeah. out right at the beginning of quarantine. I want to say, and it had like game show and a couple of other ones, but uh, there's a Zach song on there called Southside that's awesome, and they do it, and Caleb sings. And oh my God, I told I, I told them after, I was like, yo, so you got a bunch of like young fans right now. So they will kind of treat it like a boy band experience. I was like, I was going to turn around at one point and be like, stop objectifying <laughs> Caleb. Oh, I mean. Because they were in love with this fucking guy. They should have been. Uh, there was the, the funniest part of the show to me was when he sang his first note. And I was standing like a, like a row or two in front of you, yeah. and and as soon as the the his voice came out of his body, I turned around. I was like, "Yo, what?" Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Are you? That's what he sounds like when he sings. That's unbelievable." Because I had met Caleb before, yeah. and like I'd talked to him, pretty normal like speaking voice, yeah. And like uh, you would not expect that voice to come out of, and like the confidence with which he sang was incredible. Let's so. you want to do an impromptu like favorite hound mouth? Yeah. I'd, I'd have to pull up so I, I I'm on my computer, but I can get I can, it on my phone. Yeah, let's do let's do favorite hound mouth songs. I mean number one, very easy. It's a Sedona's a classic. It's just like one the Sedona is like That's no, your Dave Cobb produced. No just, no hyperbole, maybe one of the best songs of all time. How many streams you think? I see it right in front of me right now, and it is hilarious to see uh how many streams it has not as many as shape of you by <laughs> Ed Sheeran boys so yep. get back to work <laughs> uh 224 million streams for Sedona they didn't uh we're in a fight they didn't dedicate a song to me I know this time although oddly enough got the same reaction as when they did dedicate a song to me yeah Which nobody is, cared. No, no, no nobody saying anything <laughs> um the I think like one of the the greatest feathers in my cap that I will take to my grave 
is having been able to introduce Houndmouth to you. Because, you got everyone into it. Yeah, like I, I was an early Houndmouth uh, adopter, and I, I think the only person that I know that had heard of them before me was Jeff. And ah. Jeff had heard Penitentiary, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know that song. That's a good song. And I... Gave I put uh, I put Big Cat on game I put you on game I put a lo- like a lot of people have said like I started listening to Howlmuth because of you and that is just like the fucking best ca- feather in my cap because I'm not a music guy and like I don't need to I don't need to do that ever again for any other artist because Howlmuth is good enough for me they're mm. incredible I don't need to chase the dragon I uh, I'm, I'm so happy especially with like our relationship and how many music things you're like. Hey, check this out. You're yeah. gonna love this. Or like, I'll I'll say like, Hey, have you you know this person? Like, mm-hmm. I'm really into them. You're like, Oh yeah. Like I, a couple of years ago or whatever. Like yeah. Like even like the 1975. I was like, Dude, I'm so fucking into the 1975. And you're like, I told you about them like two years ago. I was like, We've seen them yeah. together. And you're like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that one feels really good, especially now because like we're friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Um, like not only did I introduce you to. A, a great band but i it we found like beautiful friends yeah out of it. <laughs> yeah yeah all right um i'll just say first of all because i was as we were talking about Howmouth, i'm like what if anybody listening doesn't really listen to Howmouth and they're just like oh those are the guys that they go and see i haven't checked them out what should i listen to i mean their their big album is little neon limelight which was 2015 mm-hmm. i want to say correct uh but i am a stan of their 2018 album golden age truly one of my favorite albums in the last like 20 years it's definitely the album that is most different from the rest of their albums it's produced by jonathan rado who did god's favorite customer does like all of alex cameron stuff does a bunch of the killers stuff he was foxygen so he's done a bunch of Diane Coffee stuff as well. Golden Age is honestly my favorite album of theirs just because it's fucking crazy and out there. Favorite songs on that album include Golden Age, Strange Love, Waiting for the Night, This Party, Initially Maligned, Great Song, Coast to Coast, Black Jaguar, Modern Love, World Leader, Amazing Album. It's, there are a lot of good songs in that album, and like a lot of forgotten songs because they they don't embrace it too much. It wasn't a commercial a ton su- success. Live, although they've got uh, someone's pushing them very hard to do that. Yeah, you, me, yes, <laughs> yes. and uh, calling them cowards and pushing them physically. Uh, it's uh, I, I like that album. It's it's probably my least favorite, but it's 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 still a good album. Uh, I'm more into like their olderish sounding First stuff. Two. Yeah. Uh, Sedona, like 15 years. Uh, My Cousin Greg, unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Pre-succession. Darlin. Darlin, great Darlin, song. great song. I mean, the, uh, the, from the hills below the city, like front to back, is yep. so good. And just like one of those like very consistent albums. Palmyra, where it, it, great it, tune. It had, uh, Palmyra is one of the best songs that they performed yeah. in Portland this weekend. Uh, yeah, like... It, from the hills below the city is is like their first album, but it's also like the such a good entry point for the band, and just a, such a great album front to back. So, yeah. Uh, shout out uh, for no one, which is like a companion piece to Sedona. I'm glad that they play it pretty much every time. They'll make that one a Matt comes out and is like, "Hey, let's I'm slow just gonna, it down. let me sit with y'all for a little bit. Yeah, let's, let me let's get let me testify. <laughs> yeah, and he testifies. And if you see them live, by the way, they it's like the, truly one of those. The song never sounds the same twice. And Matt takes these long, amazing solos, and he is truly just a uh, a, a virtuoso, incredible player. And also, if you're a guitar player, he's got he 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 plays a Stratocaster." But he's got these like flaky, uh, sparkly paint jobs on them. He's got one guitar in particular. It's an orange strat that's all sparkly. Probably the most gorgeous guitar I've ever seen in my life. Um, let's see. Uh, on their most recent album, Good For You. Mackenzie. I Mackenzie, Ride Big man. For Mackenzie oh. was pushing them to make it a single. They said, famously, uh, you don't 
get to decide that. Uh, <laughs> Mackenzie's but, such a great song. Mackenzie's awesome. Cool it's jam. great live. Cool Jam's awesome. Goodbye is awesome. Las Vegas. I can't believe the Golden Knights don't use that as a goal song. Tried to push them to do that. Again, I don't decide those things. You Man. should, because everything about that team seems like they need somebody else deciding things for them. Yo, fuck the Vegas Golden Knights right now. All my homies hate the <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights. I'm an oil man. That's right. You like you dislike the Golden Knights for a little bit before that, though. You you don't like their uh, you don't like their tone on the internet. I've never really. They're liked they're it, like so. the Hurricanes of the West. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't want the Hurricanes to do very well. Either. Oh man, a fucking. Carolina have some friends Hur- over there, and Carolina I'm still Hurricanes, like, nope. Vegas Golden Knights Stanley Cup final would be the most insufferable thing in the world. And the worst part is, we haven't really talked about how much the Bruins have chunked it and how much they screwed Don't themselves. Don't want to. All right. Well, uh, you know that they also screwed themselves by... They're not going to be able to put together a team next year yeah. because they didn't get out of the first round, and neither did like LA or... Who are like all the big American, New York, the Rangers, all the big American markets didn't get out of the first round. So now the salary cap isn't going to go up. And now the Bru- like the Bruins. Salary cap wasn't going to go up anyway because they still owe on the escrow. Like, it was going to go up like a million dollars. I think it's, it's going to end up going up a million, but they yeah. thought it could go up more like than that. Six million dollars. Yeah. It's not going no, to. No. No. Bruins. I, I was. So I couldn't sleep last night. I was dinking around. Oh, you couldn't uh, sleep last night? Correct. I was, was it because you got 17 hours of sleep the other day? No, night? it was because I was afraid to fall asleep. <laughs> That's fair. No, like I, late in the day, I still felt like taking a nap, but I was afraid to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I was playing around like with the Bruins salary cap and being like, how do you put together it's not good. a team? And like all the stuff of like, oh, they got to keep Tyler Bertuzzi, perfect Bruin, blah, blah. I love Tyler Bertuzzi. I was correct in saying that he would score a million goals this postseason. Fucking scored five. Goddamn Bruins. Totally chunked it. Uh, he was a train wreck mm-hmm. defensively in yeah. this series, but everybody but scored was. five goals. But yeah. <laughs> Taketh give it the way and yeah. everything. But the whole like, gotta like find a way, trade somebody so you can keep him. It's like, no, no, no you gotta trade somebody just so you're you can, allowed you can put to, a team to together. put. Yeah, man. I was thinking last They're night. They're in bad shape. It's a crazy thought, and I don't know how you're gonna respond to Marshawn? it. Marshawn? No. Well, yes, partially. Like it, Marshawn, it may, Olmark, it, all those guys. So I was gonna say Olmark. Yeah. Like it would make sense to consider trading Linus Olmark. It would make oh, a lot of sense. Jones said to trade Olmark. It's, it was stupid when he said it mid season. You just get ahead mid- of the curve. Se- mid season for a Vezina, Vezina trophy guy on a team that was like. Stanley Cup or bust, guess what? You bust. His his trade value is never higher than it is right now, and I don't think that they necessarily need to carry him going into next year. You're going to need to find a, a backup uh, that you would have to bring in, but I, I would consider trading Linus Olmark. You know who's an interesting one? Freddie. What do you do with Freddie? Trent Frederick, RFA. Yeah. Is he your third line center next year? Might have to be. It's a, it's a little bit of a scary thought. Or do you do you like not tender him and let you, that would be ridiculous? He scored what like nineteen goals, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, I think he was. I think was he did twenty goals? I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, like they they've got a tough fucking summer, man. <laughs> that's that's part of the reason that this sucks so much because like seventeen goals. Like you can look at like the New York Rangers and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. they went for it this year and they they blew it. Blah, 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 blah. It's like okay, but like they're still gonna have like most of that team coming back next year. Like you're not, you're probably not gonna have Patrick Kane. You may not mm-hmm. have Vladimir Tarasenko, but like those guys didn't really do shit. So who gives a fuck? Yeah. So uh, like uh, they, I don't. Their window is not closed. The Bruins' window might be. If it's not closed, it's pretty close to closed. I'm mad that the Rangers lost. I was pulling for them. I. As a hockey person, I don't do the please like my sport thing. I'm like, if you like it, you like it, and you're going to check it out on your own time if you don't like it. Right, but I, I want you to know, watch it, but I'm not going to expend energy to trying to convince you. But I do have like my mental map of, like, this is the United States, or this is North America. We'll pretend there's teams in Canada, too. <laughs> and I have, like friends faces over each state of like this is a hockey like i have i can talk hockey with this person and nora is a rangers fan okay i need to have like my pals pulling for teams that are in 
because I'm not saying like Nora's not going to watch the playoffs now or anything, but it's more exciting yeah. if like my friend who's an Islanders fan, if like the Islanders are in it because they agree, he gets yeah. all worked up yeah. about yeah. it and everything. You like to talk to people that are excited about the things that you're excited about. Right. Like so, I have a devil's fan and I was texting with him all, uh, all night. Last and you'll night. be into the devils because like yes, you're rooting right. for your friend's yeah. fandom. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's amazing when you've got, when you, when you know people, Oilers, are the team that is pissing me off the least right now. How crazy is that? That is like in the world. Bruins. There's a lot of time for that. Celtics. To uh, although Chargers had a good draft and the Chargers social team had a better draft. They were horny. Yeah, they took frogs. a bunch of uh, they took a bunch of players from TCU. So they were doing tons of frogs. we got that frog in us <laughs> or like Tom Telesco draft tcu players like nut button it was like thing. there was a um, there's the uh the classic like three finger fountain soda thing yep. and it was like tcu in the first round tcu in the third round tcu in the fourth round and just fucking slamming that love it uh all but right yeah we the, gotta oh you got more what, hockey thoughts? Barry? yeah we gotta talk about barry we're i got coming up against the clock a little bit we definitely want to talk about barry uh possibly I'm not saying it's the best, but possibly the best episode. One of my favorite episodes. I was floored by this. Uh, this is uh, shaping up to be my favorite season of Barry. It's mm. been so good to this point. And they have like 1,000% leaned into... Th- <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. He's You're not dead. It's yeah. great. Uh, they are 1,000% leaning into the silliness while also still holding up it's bargain for like, hey, this is a dark show. Yeah, they and haven't lost its tone. Like, no, it, it like, but like the opposite of losing its tone. It has found its tone the best that it ever has at any point in the series. And uh, our guy Vince Mancini, who I had a long chat with yesterday, um, is talking to him about Barry. He said that it has big uh, burn after reading energy, and that is so one thousand percent true and if you're not a if if you have seen burn after reading oh you gotta watch that movie you would fucking love that movie i do know steal this album by system of a down okay kind of sounds like the same thing no like your homework is to go home like today and watch burn after reading brad pitt uh john malkovich um uh francis mcdormand it's and they every every character anyone i know (laughs) every character in that movie is like the dumbest person alive. They're all so fucking stupid, and it's so funny. Man. So watch that movie. But it, it Barry has the same same tone, and just like all the storylines happening in Barry right now, very interesting. Yeah, and I'm I love it, invested in all the characters. I, it's not a spoiler. When I, like, uh, Hank has broken bad, mm-hmm. which was really really interesting. And it's incredible like the, acting performance is, this week. Oh my Hank. God. He and Cristobal had multiple awesome fucking scenes. Yeah. And I, I, I think that maybe midway through last year, the Cristobal thing had gotten old yes, for a lot agreed. of people. And like, even a little bit, it was, it was like, Oh, he good, got old. Good for yeah. moments of levity. Uh, but like, it was just like, all right, we're doing this a lot. <laughs> right. But man, as things start to come to a head with these two characters, it, man, there was no real like conflict for them in, in that storyline for a while, right? Where like they were just kind of like gallivanting around, frolicking and, and right. like, living their life and enjoying and trying to get their business off the ground. And it was like, all right, well, there's no real conflict here. Now they're like running into okay, well, this is this idea that you guys have. This is who's going to be mad about it. This is. These are your options for how to survive this. Which, like, in retrospect, now makes that time where, like, I was complaining about, like, okay, they, they're they they're just fucking frolicking around like, and nothing okay, serious Okay, we get it. Happening. They found love. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, like, they – now it's gotten to a point where they justify that time spent by being, like, okay, cool. Gr- glad you guys are having a great time, but it's time to either shit or get off the pot because this shit is getting real. Right, because – and – the the stakes being there makes you care way more about like if like if if they split up or worse you're like fuck man like well what happens to Cristobal whereas last year this time I was like God if I hear Hank say Cristobal mm-hmm. one more time I'm in on Cristobal and the guy who plays Cristobal Great. is fucking awesome this was an awesome episode this was an awesome Sally episode I don't know this, this everybody it just made me realize that. 
Uh, famously, Barry isn't really in this episode. Yeah, you uh, don't see him at all, and yeah. it, you don't miss him. Right. I, I, was th- like, I think he's wow. the worst character in this this season. Yeah, I was like, I care so much about story, uh, Sally's storyline, which I was pretty sure I already... I, I, I thought I did. And seeing this episode, I was like, yeah, give me the like, give me an entire Sally episode. Uh, Jim Moss is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, a funny thing happens with uh, Cusino's son, which I think everything's going to be all right there. Yeah. 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 I, and I didn't like that move. I, I, I thought that was like too cheap obvious, or what? too yeah. obvious, too cheap. Anytime you see somebody in the position that Cousineau was before that happened. Oh yeah. You know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. So like I, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of that and I don't, but you didn't get... find the execution funny. No. Oh, I thought it was, I no. mean, you know, I, I didn't find that all, all too rewarding. Uh, I don't want to get like, we're not going to get into spoilers obviously as we just kind of glazed over the Cousineau thing, but yeah. like the ending, uh, what do you think? Like w- real, not real. I said this to somebody today. If there is any show I would not trust to have a reliable narrator, mm-hmm. it would be Barry. Yeah. So my my guess, or I guess my theory, is that it's like a projection of uh, like a fear of, or like just kind of like a imagining what would be. Yeah. If they went down a certain path, and I hope that it is because I I think it the. Uh, the jump there would be too too drastic, and yeah, too, and I don't think and, the other person could do it. Fair, yeah, I think that's fair, and um, I I think to to make that jump after one of the most interesting and compelling episodes of the entire series would be like, ah, oh, shit was just getting good, yeah. So I I hope that that's the case. But it was such a jarring. The timing of it was so jarring, mm. both in like the the timing of the timeline, but also the timing of it just being shoehorned into the episode. One quick succession thought may contain spoilers, but doesn't really. Whatever. Uh, no one cares about Shiv's pregnancy, right? Um, I I don't know. Like, no, I, I I I wouldn't say that nobody cares because see a lot of people talking about it. I, well, I, just, I, I've seen I just think people, that's the least interesting thing going on. I'm seeing people be like, wait, she's holding a glass. Well, I'm like, yo, if you've been following this season, she's always holding a glass or right. like pretending to do Coke or whatever. And she's. Yeah, she, she, I don't think you ever see her drink or like. No, she doesn't. Yeah, right. So. Um, she. Uh, also, th- like, would it be so off brand or out of character for her to just be like, whatever, fuck it? <laughs> like, I Somebody, I, I think it's. Uh, do you, do you follow, like, uh, Joe wrote this? No. Joe wrote this? Joanna Robinson, uh, writer and podcaster uh, at The Ringer, Taller Than You Think, author of MCU, The Rain for Marvel's, Marvel Studios. Uh, Marvel? W- yeah. I uh, remember I used to say Marvel. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think it was uh, I think it was Joanna Robinson tweeted, and maybe you won't get this because you weren't like a Mad Men person, but... Like succession is madman like in that it's not there to give you big twists and like yeah, of course oh not. the we're gonna find out the father of Shiv's child is whomever. Like there's nothing that they could tell us there. No, and that, like that's not what we watched succession for. We exactly. talked about this in the past where it's like Nothing happens in succession. You're yeah. watching it for the mundaneness of it and like the interactions between the people. Yeah. The plot doesn't fucking matter. It's how they interact with each other. Yeah. Uh, I didn't end up getting to tell the other story of the, the, the bed story, but that'll... Should that be a bonus? It's a Patreon bonus. <laughs> that could be a, that'll be a Patreon bonus. Honestly, I don't even remember what it is at this point. I know that you, I was the you, one who introduced yeah, those two bed stories, it. but... All right. I'll tell the other bed story on patreon it's gonna be fucking wild it is a very good story all right bye